Financial planning is about deciding where do we want to be in the future? Do we want to own a home? Do we want to expand our family? Do we want to not have to work forever? Do we want work to be optional at some point? For our FinTech Spotlight segment this month, we are featuring our sponsor, Monarch Money, a modern way to manage your money with couples in mind. I've invited the former head of financial advice at Monarch and current advisor to the company, Natalie Taylor, on the show today to talk to us about financial planning for couples and how Monarch Money can help. Welcome to the show, Natalie. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about this term financial planning. What does that actually mean? Is it more than just a budget? Yeah, good question. A financial plan is definitely more than a budget. Budgets are really important, and that's about how you're spending your money on a day-to-day basis. Um, so it's important to track your budget. Um, but financial planning is more forward-looking to make sure that you're moving in the direction that you want to, because not having a plan is a financial plan. It's just not a great one. Financial planning is about deciding where do we want to be in the future? Do we want to own a home? Do do we want to expand our family? Do we want to not have to work forever? Do we want work to be optional at some point? If those are things that you want to pursue, then a financial plan is your path to getting there. Got it. Could you talk about the elements of a financial plan? I, I get the, the grand scheme of it, but what is what are the elements that make up a financial plan? Yeah. So the first thing is to develop your goals and kind of get a sense of what do you want to accomplish? Do we want to be able to stop working in our 50s and our 60s? Um, what matters to us? Um, do we want to own a home or buy a larger home? And really getting clear on what are those goals that are important to you and when are they going to happen? From there, then you can prioritize them because a lot of times we can achieve all the goals. We can't just, but we can't work on all of them at the same time. So You'll almost always find that you're working on multiple things at once, but maybe not everything at once. So then there's some goal prioritization that happens. At Monarch, we recommend that you start with building your emergency fund, paying off credit card debt, and getting started on saving for retirement, especially if you have a contribution that your employer makes to a retirement plan at work. If you're not sure where to start, those are three really good places to start. But a financial plan is setting those goals and then um, looking at your budget and figuring out how much do we have to allocate towards the things that we want to accomplish, and then putting that on autopilot as much as you can. So working on the goals that sound fun to accomplish, that's kind of plan A. Plan B is making sure that you're protected um, even if things don't go according to plan. So that would be things like making sure that you have life insurance if you need it and disability insurance to protect your income, homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, all those kinds of plan B sort of things, maybe even an umbrella policy if your net worth is on the higher side so that you'll be okay no matter what happens. I love it. Natalie, you used this word fun and then you also talked about budget. Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> How can a budget be fun? <laughs> Uh, good question. One of the like most tangible ways to make a budget fun is to have a fun account. And I don't know if you've talked about this on your show before, but but that can be a really tangible way to make things fun. I know for my husband and I, we've been together almost 20 years. And when we first got married, we made a deal with each other that every bonus would go 50% to our fun account and 50% towards our goals. Because that was our way of like tangibly enjoying the bonus and um, making sure that we had fun, which I'm not great at, but my husband's really fun and that we were making progress on our goals, which I'm good at. My husband, I'm, I'm a good help to him on that. So having a fun account, you know, these days we fund our fun account every single month and that's our money to use when we want to do something that doesn't fit in our normal budget. If you don't plan for fun, then it's always going to throw you off budget. So it's really important that it's a part of your budget. Um, it's also important to have a boundary around it so that you can have freedom and flexibility and fun within that boundary and not feel guilty when you spend on fun things because you know you've done it intentionally and you know that you're intentionally putting money in other places where it needs to go as well. I love that. And yes, we talk about it, but we don't talk about it enough on the show because I, I fall into that category of goal setting and planning. But I think that moving our goals and the, the and, and our goals together as a couple specifically towards like, what do we care about the most? What do we want to be doing more together as a couple? How can we make this relationship awesome? Like yeah. that's, a, that's fun, right? And if you can make your money work for you, in that direction, that is uh, even better. Let's talk about some areas maybe as as couples are starting to develop their financial plan or even just thinking about the things you brought up, where can they maybe make some mistakes in the process? What are some pitfalls along the way when we're talking about financial planning for couples? I think one of the pitfalls is not getting on the same page from the start on your core values. So core values just means what matters to you at the end of the day. This isn't like a side of an elementary school that says like respect, integrity. That's not that kind of thing. Core values are really like if you had to make less money, um, what would make it worth it? right? For me, it would make it worth it if the work was meaningful. And meaningful work is one of our core values.
values. It would make it worth it to me if I could have more time with my family because family and connection is one of our core values, right? So core values are very tangible and they're the things that are most important to you and your partner at the end of the day. And so starting there, I think is really key as you look at any budgeting decisions or any goal decisions to make sure that they're in alignment with your values and represent your values. So I think that's a mistake that um, that people make is they don't start there. I think another one is not balancing across goals. So if we think of there's kind of three kinds of goals, there's savings goals, investing goals, and pay down goals. Most goals that you'll have, financial goals that you'll have will fit into one of those buckets. And Having good balance in your finances often means working on a goal from each of those buckets at any given time. So I think one of the mistakes I see is people saying, well, I'm only going to pay off debt right now. And then once 100% of my debt is paid off, then I'll start investing or then I'll start saving in my emergency fund. And the truth is, we don't know how life is going to unfold. I'm old enough to see, um, to know and to have seen for so many of my clients that Things will unfold in all kinds of wonky ways, um, opportunities we never dreamed of and challenges that we never thought we'd face. And so by balancing across saving, investing, and paying down debt, that sets you up in a more resilient position financially to handle whatever comes your way. And it helps you move towards your goals as well. I love that, Natalie. That's fantastic advice. And it also helps to have tools to make the process easier. So talk to us about what Monarch Money does and how the how they make the process easier. So Monarch Money is a personal financial management tool. So you can link all of your accounts from wherever they are. And one of the great things for partners is that we built it partner first. So that means that you can each log in. And even if you don't share ownership of an account, you can still look at everything in one cohesive picture. So you can put checking accounts, savings accounts, credit cards, mortgages, investment accounts. You can really get a sense of your finances as a whole. And then you can set up a budget or a plan for how are we going to spend and you can track against that. You can be as detailed or as broad as you want, but it's a way to sort of be a command central or a dashboard for your financial life as a couple. And what we're building towards is the ability to, um, and you'll see some of this functionality in the app right now, the ability to, to track your progress towards your goals, to say we're working on retirement and college for the boys and buying a new home and paying down a mortgage. Um, you can set each of those goals and assign your accounts to each of those goals so that it gives meaning to your IRA and your 401k and your Roth IRA. You can add all of those up and earmark them towards your retirement goal so that you can think about your finances in a more goal-oriented way. I love that. You know, you've got thousands of families on this app now from, from what I hear. What are they saying? I guess, how, how does it differ from something, you know, like Mint? How, how does it differ? Well, there are some similarities. Um, in fact, our CEO was the first product manager ever at Mint. And so he was part of the foundational team that invented Mint in the first place. But I think what we're getting the opportunity to do at Monarch is to finish the work that I believe Mint never got around to finishing, to go and extend beyond budgeting and be able to really help people plan for their future. Some other really key differences are that we are not ad supported, nor will we ever be. So the experience is really clean. We are user first in every sense of the word. So we wanna build what users need um, and we respect data privacy. And so I think there are some differences in, in those ways as well. We also have a really active development team that is constantly adding new features. And I think that's a little bit different too after Mint's acquisition many years ago. I think things change in terms of momentum towards making the app better. And Monarch, we're really in the weeds working on it every day to make it better for our users. I love that. Yeah, there are certain companies that maybe have had the the, the stronghold for a while and then they just, uh, I guess they, they rely on that stronghold as opposed to continuing to innovate. So that, that's why I love about uh, competition. It's fantastic because <laughs> it, right. the consumer wins in, 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 the, in the competitive world. Talk that's to us right. about the cost because if you guys say you're not uh, doing um, you know ads and things like that, there's obviously a cost to it. Talk, talk to us about that. Yep, yeah, so it's either $100 a year or uh, $14.99 a month. And so it's a premium product. And um, the reason that we don't give it away for free is because we don't wanna have an ad supported experience. We don't wanna be helping you get out of credit card debt and then also selling you credit cards. There's just something fundamentally that doesn't jive for us in doing business that way. So yeah, $14.99 a month or $100 a year. Thank you for being very real about a, a real issue in, in our financial services world. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Natalie, uh, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you talking to us about the importance of financial planning for couples and then again how monarch can help with that uh, everybody monarch money is a sponsor of this podcast full transparency they're a sponsor because i really like what they're doing i think it's fantastic and i think they're bringing a great product out there specifically
specifically for couples and families, as well as other people who are uh, not not in a, a family environment as well. If you want to support this show and support them and try them out, go to marriagekidsandmoney.com slash monarchmoney. I'll put that link in our show notes. Natalie, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was fun. 